episode 77 of the podcast, What Difference Does Age Make When We're Talking About Behavior Problems for Grooming, Vet Visits, and Other Types of Pet Care? What should we be thinking about while we're working with puppies, or with adult dogs, or with elderly dogs? Find out this week. You're listening to the Creating Great Grooming Dogs podcast. I'm Chrissy Newmeyer-Smith. I'm a certified professional groomer, a certified behavior consultant for canines, a certified professional dog trainer, and the owner of Happy Critters in Nashua, New Hampshire. And this, my friends and colleagues, is the podcast where grooming and training meet. difference does age make when we're talking about behavior problems during grooming, during vet visits, um, other types of home care, medications, brushing? What difference does age make? And I think that we really need to think about that for a couple of reasons, because there are different developmental phases. But also, here's one for us, we have different opinions about what a dog should know and expectations about what they should be doing at different ages too. So let's start off by talking about puppies. So with our puppies, we tend to have more patience. I think most of us realize that puppies are going to wiggle. They're going to be wiggly. They're going to be wanting to explore things, that we're going to calm them down if they start getting worried. Most of us have a little bit more patience with puppies than we do with an adult dog or an elderly dog. And you know what? Kind of think about that and assess yourself. Decide if that's true for you and if there's something you can change there. I know for me, for a long time, I didn't have the same level of patience for the for the adult dogs. But the seniors I were almost like puppies again. Like that same amount of, okay, I'm going to be super patient with you because you're old. And But I had to change that for myself because I want us all to bring the same level of patience to any of the animals that we're working with. Because we've talked about this before on the podcast, behavior problems stem from a dog who's having difficulty, a dog who's having a hard time. They don't just wake up one day and say, I just really want to mess with my groomer today. (laughs) And even if they do hate something, I want us to kind of like pull back and say, why do they hate it? And I know hate it is very, very anthropomorphic. We don't know if they hate something. But if we know they have a known issue, a response that we do not do not want to a particular thing, we need to think about, well, why do they have that response? This dog is having a hard time. This dog is having difficulty. So if we're always viewing behavior problems through the lens of this dog is having some difficulty, I want us to bring the same level of patience to all of the ages. So with puppies, we tend to have a lot more patience. And because in this part, I want to talk mostly about the puppies. So another thing about working with the puppies is that they have less experience. They don't really have any formed opinions about the way that we're holding them, the way that we're doing something. It's all quite new. And even if it's something that they've been learning about, it's not like they have years worth of experience of this is the way this progresses, right? Like there's so much that is new and we have to be thinking about that, that we are part of their early experience. This is part of that socialization process. So when we talk about socialization, it's really important for us to remember that's not just getting them near things and around things and having things happen near them, on them, to them. It's about doing it in such a way that the puppy always feels like that's something I wouldn't mind doing again. It's about the outcome and the feeling of it. A lot of our owners don't get that. They just bring their puppy lots of places. They have strangers giving him cookies. Oh, he's nervous. Just have strangers give him cookies. So now he's like taking cookies from strangers that he's scared of and the scare is still happening, but they think they're socializing. What they should be doing is always thinking, is my dog thinking I could do that again? That was kind of fun. That was interesting. I I wouldn't mind doing that again. Bring that kid over again. Who's the guy with the baseball hat? You know, like (laughs) we want them to enjoy the things that they're being exposed to and socialized to. We want them to think, oh, hey, brushing. I like brushing. You know, oh, you're looking at my ears. Great. Not it's time to look in your ears and you better hold still. So things that we can express to our owners And things that we can send them home with homework are to add a lot of these types of handling 
to their early socialization and make sure that they really got that message that socialization is about making them all good experiences. All of those socialization exercises are about it being a good experience. Doesn't mean bring them to Home Depot and scare the dickens out of them. <laughs> it means, you know, bring them someplace and keep them at the point that they're having fun and that they're having a good time. And then if they're not, get them out of there. Get them out of there if they're not having a good time. So we can have our owners start working on things if we, if we make sure that they know that that's the goal. Really, really, really important with puppies because puppies are building their new experiences. They're forming their lifelong opinions about what grooming is and what people do and situations and, you know, smells. Everything is forming this new opinion, which is why most people, when they think about getting a dog from a breeder, are kind of assuming that this dog is going to be great and this dog is going to be perfect. And in many cases, with an, with an awesome breeder and with a really educated owner, yeah, oh, you could set it up to be perfect from day one. But that's not the reality for many, many dogs, and that's okay. But we have to be thinking about our opportunities with puppies are to help them think that all of this is great. All of it's great. So as dog professionals, as groomers, as vet techs, we can be making sure that we're trying to address the fact that everything we're doing should be in this dog's comfort zone. And every dog is different. And puppies, we have a lot of patience with the puppies, but boy, there's a little squirmy, little goofy, goofy puppies, right? But I want you to be thinking about the three C's, calm, comfortable, and cooperative. I want you to think about, you know, we're preserving the trust because most puppies, if you keep it light, they have a tendency to want to trust people. I'm not talking about like once they get to about six months old, that adolescent phase, sometimes that trust is already wavering, right? Like, oh, I don't know. Especially if they're a breed who is a little bit more um, guarded, if you will. You know, there are some breeds that aren't going to form really strong family attachments with every Tom, Dick, and Harry, you know. Um, <laughs> we need to be thinking about that, that that puppy stage is a really important stage for them to start thinking about, oh, well, I've been in a grooming room a whole bunch of times, and I've been to the vet's office a whole bunch of times, and my owners touch me all over with weird stuff, and everything's great. So that as they become a little bit more jaded later in life, those early lessons are, oh, well, this isn't scary. Because the scary is the part that dogs have trouble with. If they think it's not scary, they're probably going to let you throughout their life. So when we look at the puppies, we have to think about we are forming their adult personalities and their adult opinions about what is normal and what is not. We should be touching them all over. We should be, you know, passing them around as long as that puppy is still having fun. And we want it to be fun. We want to make this puppy comfortable. Um, I'll give you an example of... <laughs> A friend of mine, when she got, I, I didn't know when she got her puppy, so I didn't find out till later, but they got a puppy, and here's this puppy in puppy class, and this Sheltie puppy is just hiding underneath the chairs, pretty much trying to avoid torment, right? Like, that's not a good socialization for that particular puppy, but it sounds like the other puppies in the class were having a great time, right? Her puppy's lasting impression was... I just need to be near these couple of people and I'll be safe. Not a great message. We wanted that puppy to be more comfortable around other dogs, right? So be thinking about these early, early experiences and how exciting it is for us as groomers and for vet techs and for owners to be able to say, you know what, I'm going gonna, gonna to help you be comfortable with it from the get-go. And especially if we all have that feeling, then we're not pushing a pup past what they can handle. So we can have a lot of patience with puppies. And uh, so somebody asked me a question about a video that I put up um, and it was uh, me grooming a puppy and the puppy is being super, super wiggly. And there's this interesting point where we were talking about it and um, wiggly doesn't necessarily mean refusal or trying to get away. Like a loose wiggly is still a puppy who's having fun, 
just that they aren't holding still and having fun. There's a looseness. A, there's something you can't quite see in video, but you can feel in your hands and that you can work around. So, yeah, I'll work around a wiggly puppy who's still kind of just a loosey-goosey goofball. <laughs> Tick tock, loosey goosey goofball, right? But to get them kind of roly poly, I don't care if I'm like, if they're rolling over and, you know, they've got like a back foot up behind their ear. I don't care. That's all right. As long as they're still kind of in that loose, relaxed, silly, wiggly, I'll work with that because, you know what? That's the puppy that's having a good time. The puppy who starts trying to break free feels different. On video, they might look pretty much the same, but that feels different in a groomer's hand or in a vet's hand or in a vet tech's hand. And I'll tell you when I was a vet tech holding holding dogs for the veterinarian, a lot of the time the veterinarian is very task oriented what they are doing at that moment. It's the technician who is usually holding the pup and knows what is going on. You know, like, oh, he's really stiffening. So ideally we all work together. Plenty, plenty of times where, you know, I was holding an animal and told the vet, like, oh, he's getting a little nervous now, you know, and then we can make choices about what we're going to do next. <laughs> um, you know, like, okay. And, and to help the dog relax, you know, help him relax, move on forward. So puppies are really trying to learn about their world. They're set to learn about their world. Like it's their job as a puppy is to learn about their world. So we can spend our time being patient making sure that socialization is always leaving them with the feeling of, I could do that again. Um, calm, comfortable, cooperative, preserving their trust. Whatever trust they're giving you, keep it. Like, don't break that trust. Um, helping them to be relaxed and making sure their owners understand what's going on and giving them some homework. If you're enjoying this podcast, please remember to subscribe so that you don't miss any episodes and tell all of your friends. So many of the behavior problems that we see in the grooming room and in the veterinary setting or with owners at home involve adult dogs, adult dogs and elderly dogs. And for purposes of this discussion, I'm just going to lump them both together right now. But I want you to ask yourself, are you patient with the adults? Do you have a different level of patience? And it's what I asked in the first part, too, when we're talking about puppies. Do we have the same level of patience that we do with the puppies, the adult dogs, the elderly dogs. And I also want you to ask yourself, do you have a different level of patience if that dog is a new customer to you or if you have a history together? Because I'll tell you what, I noticed in myself early on is that if I had a history with that dog, I guess there was sort of this feeling, and <laughs> maybe you have felt this, that um, this dog should know by now. Because I've been the one who groomed this dog, right? Like the, there's this feeling of like, well, I know I didn't mess him up. Well, I'll tell you what, I've been doing this for a long time. I did not always groom and train the way that I do today. And um, yeah, I, I made just as many problems as I solved long ago. So there are times where we have to kind of look at, well, we do have a history together, this dog and I. And um, am I ready to, to go back and say, all right, I'm going to start off with as much patience as if you were a brand new puppy or a brand new customer to me. Um, and to kind of start over, start from the beginning. Like, all right, let's, let's start where you're calm, comfortable, and cooperative and work on it. And also, if we're frustrated with the owners, we shouldn't be projecting that onto the dogs. And um, I'm guilty of that too. <laughs> There are definitely, there are definitely still times where I'm like, oh gosh, you know, like this owner never does the homework, right? But I want you to be thinking about if we're setting our owners up for success and we're setting these dogs up for success and we're trying to keep them calm, comfortable, and cooperative, we're trying to educate, we've let go of this need to get it entirely done today because we have our safety policy, we have put out the fact that this is all about teaching your dog to be good for it. Um, when dogs have trouble with behavior issues, that's when dogs get hurt, people get hurt, and equipment gets broken. Just lay it out plain as day. Like, I no longer do that. Not going to get hurt. Not going to risk hurting your dog to get a beautiful trim today. If you want your dog to have beautiful trims, then these are the things that we need to do. 
Um, and owners have some responsibility in that. So with the adult dogs, sometimes we project being upset with the owner on a dog who is just having a tough time. And remember, behavior problems are a dog who is having difficulty. They're stressed, or they're frustrated, or they're scared, or they're uncomfortable, or they have this history of knowing that this is going to turn into a fight. Who knows which version of discomfort they're, they're having. Each dog is going to be a little bit different, and you need to figure that out. What version of discomfort is this dog having? Why is this dog finding this difficult? So that's one of the things about working with the adults that's a little bit different with the puppies. Adults have experience, right? They've been exposed to stuff. And maybe that experience was good. Maybe that experience was scary. Maybe that experience was painful. You know, a lot of dogs, their first experience with anything around their ears might be an ear infection. So if they're not a breed that gets their ears trimmed, you know, and don't get a lot of work done on their ears, that first experience of someone looking in their ears could have been an ear infection, leaving a long-term impression of, I remember somebody handling my ears and that hurt. So adults have learned things, but they also, the other tricky thing about working with the adult dogs is that they've learned how they like to deal with stress, what they do when they're afraid, what they do when they're uncomfortable, what they do when they're stressed out, much like us as adults. There was a time when we were little kids and, you know, basically an infant, if it's stressed out or frustrated or hungry, it cries, you know, (laughs) what, what are your options? As an infant, you cry, right? Later on, you start finding that like some kids hit when they're upset. Some kids cry when they're upset. Some kids throw things when they're upset, right? Like dogs, I want you to think about as they become adults, we start seeing patterns in the way that they handle stress, frustration, discomfort. And that's part of knowing that individual dog because they have learned. So some signs of stress, cowering, trying to get away, Um, maybe growling at people, trying to drive people away. So before you even approach, they're growling or they're barking and lunging at the front of the cage or lunging on the end of the leash or trying to get behind their owner. Before they even walk into your shop, they could already have this feeling of every time I get in the car, something bad happens, right? So adults have these little things that we're going to see, these behaviors that they show when they're stressed. They've also formed opinions about what is safe and unsafe, what is comfortable and uncomfortable, and who in their world they trust. Adult dogs already have these opinions based on their experiences so far. So if they think something is unsafe, it's our job to try to convince them it is safe. If they think something is uncomfortable, we're going to try to make it more comfortable. And remember that that's where the behavior problems are. The dog that is really wiggly for nails might not be about the nail trim. It could be about the way they're being held. It could be about slipping around on the surface that they're standing on. You'd be amazed at how many dogs are much different if you put a yoga mat or one of the palm mats on the table (laughs) and they don't slip around as much. You'd be amazed at how, how many dogs settle down differently if they have good footing. (laughs) <laughs> One of my own guys does that. Like if I want to do his feet, I can do them. If I bring him over to a rug, he's like, oh, perfect. Now I'm not going to slip around, you know. So adult dogs have opinions about how to handle it when they are frustrated or scared or uncomfortable. And we need to think about that because puppies usually just default to going to get away or maybe scream or maybe put teeth on people usually without a whole lot of experience on hurting anybody. Usually it's just teeth on people. The puppy grabby stuff, you know, that, ah, you know, I mean, at worst, there are some puppies that I've met that were truly aggressive, but that is not the norm. Usually that's kind of a, a an indication that they need to have some veterinary testing, find out if something major medical is going on there, because most puppies don't have that real hard edge at a young, young age. Um, Even the breeds that you would expect would, don't. Not usually at a really young age. If you're able to keep them comfortable, they usually are like, "Mm, yeah, okay, I'll go along with it. (laughs) So the adult dogs, like I said, are just, they need as much patience. And sometimes that means they actually need more patience because we really need to step back and go, okay, he's going to have a dramatic reaction 
because that's his experience for every nail trim in his entire life was like all the other smaller subtle things he did didn't make people stop or go away so he just jumps directly to you know something crazy over the top right like just dials it up cranks it up to 11 <laughs> see who gets that reference <laughs> is that an age test cranks it up to 11 uh, you know like that there's it's different than the gradual process of I'm not comfortable with this. I said, I'm not comfortable with this. I'm trying to wiggle and get away. I'm trying to give you the big eye. I'm trying to maybe growl a little bit. Some dogs just jump directly to air snaps and, and something more dramatic. Sometimes we need even more patience, but the difference between working with like the puppies and the adults, like I said, I think it has more to do with us remaining patient, no matter what the age no matter what the age. Um, and actually the elderly, I think that sometimes we start having more patience again because now we're like, oh, he's just losing it or he's sore and it's just not going to change for him, you know, and who knows how sore this poor little dog is or now he's going blind or now he's going deaf and he's bumping into things at home and, you know, but we need to be patient with all of them. And at any age, there could be something physical that physically hurts, um, plenty of little puppies have something that's sore, you know, some of these little tiny, tiny puppies have, you know, really terrible joints, <laughs> you know, so be thinking or, or the teeth, good God, those little puppy teeth when they're coming in and you're handling around their face. Oh, I'm sure that hurts, you know, while they're teething. So be thinking about that. These dogs are, if they're having an issue, are showing that they're frustrated. They're having a hard time. They need some help to be calm and they need some feeling of security. They need to trust us. And that goes for the adults. That goes for the elderly. Um, plenty of dogs that I get because this is sort of my shtick and I go into people's homes are like at that 14, 15 year old. They're like, we think he's got like one grooming left in him, but he had a seizure last time he was there and he's always been scared about it. And we just need these couple of things done. So I'm often getting dogs at at that late age and then doing groomings on them and helping them be comfortable with me and helping them be calm and modifying what our expectations are because we can't just worry about a beautiful gorgeous trim with a dog who's having a hard time because dogs who are having a hard time have a behavior problem and that's when dogs get hurt people get hurt and equipment gets broken the weekly action step this week is to assess yourself do you have just as much patience with the puppies as you do with the adults and you do with the elderly dogs? Do you have just as much patience with new customers as you do with your old and current customers? Take a look at yourself and your patience level and if you need more patience in a particular area. If you'd like more information, you can find me at Chrissy at happycritters.net, um, happycrittersdogtraining.com, or you can join the Facebook group Creating Great Grooming Dogs podcast or the Facebook page, Creating Great Grooming Dogs. I really look forward to hearing from you.